Hello everyone and welcome to another Naraka Blade Point video. This is OSK and today we're going to be taking a look at a VOD review of another game I had in Platinum 4 on Steam. That's Platinum 4 on PC. We had 9 kills this game, had a nice little win, so I figured I would put together another video to kind of show you my thought process through each of the kills that I got, where my mind is during the early game, through the mid game, and later to the late game to take the win. And in particular, this will show you how to dominate the early game to get yourself an early advantage and to snowball that into a better mid game and a better late game. So. Guys, hope you enjoy the video. If you do, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more of these Naraka Blade Point content. Share this with your friends if you think it's worth that much and comment down below to help me out with the YouTube algorithm. But for now, go ahead and jump in to the VOD review of today's game with Zipin Ying. All right, guys, here we go to give you some context. It's a with these game. Spawning into Imperial Village. It wasn't the high loot. That little frosty lady there justina goo skin is going to be an enemy here pretty quick first thing i want to do is get a weapon notice how i skipped over the soul jades there try to get some armor through that and now i'm ready to fight it's blue rarity which is pretty good for early and we're just going to jump right in Just so you know, whenever we start off, we always want to make sure that we have at least a blue weapon and blue armor before we actively look for fights in the early game. It's very important to build up that early advantage because as you'll see, our opponent has a similar sort of loadout. They might also be on a similar skill level of you, so you want any, any sort of advantage you can get. First thing you want to do is open up with the light attack combo like I just did. A quick one, two, and a dash to see what they're doing. Always keep your eyes on the enemy. You never want to keep an eye on yourself, your own character. Very important to know what to do next. Now here I can see they're charging blue. Quick dash into a counter to get that. Looking for the counter combo. I don't get it. So we're back to resetting. They're going to gain some armor back. Charge up a focus to try to bait something. We both go for the counter there. This is a nice little example of a mind game that you can play with your opponents, especially at the higher level of play. They're going to go ahead and try to get the focus attack. I'm always looking at the, at my opponent so I can see if they're going to actually commit to the focus. In this case, I reacted a little bit, a little bit slowly. Ooh, sorry for the pixels there. In that case, I was just a little bit late on the counter. Do my own focus, laid on the counter there as well. Just trying to bait something out. It's not ready yet. And get my own focus attack out. That's pretty it's pretty self-explanatory on that one. It's all about mind games at this high level of play. So to give an example of the movements that I'm trying to do, my ideal movement would be one, two. And instead of dashing to the side like I did here, you want to sort of dash forward instead. You want to try to make him have to rotate his camera as much as possible so that, for one thing, if you're way back here on his screen, he can't see what you're doing. And you could be priming a counter. You could be doing a lot of things that would throw his game off. So it's always better to dash forward into the side rather than just straight to the side like I like like I like to do in this match. So something to keep in mind for future fights. Other than that, it's more advanced um, tips of just feeling the fight out, seeing what you can get away with, uh, if they're gonna bite on the counter or not. Uh, if they do bite on the counter, you can set up a combo. If they don't counter at all, then you can hit them with focus attacks, and that's what I was going with. He only countered once, uh, so I knew that he was gonna be susceptible to some quick focus attacks if I threw him out. It's the greatest gift of all. Check to see where my opponents are. I see there's one over here. In this fight, there's not really much to show off. I go ahead and swap my weapons just so I have the backup immediately ready. Catch him in the middle of the grapple. A jump into a vertical on the nunchucks is pretty much true. Pretty much a true combo. 
Okay. Didn't go for it that time. The health's low enough that I can just throw stuff out. Now, if we rewind this, just to show you a few extra tips here. This is something that I picked up from watching Chinese and Vietnamese players. If you grapple with the nunchucks and go for the horizontal, that little slam at the end is pretty much guaranteed in most situ in most situations. From here, just using my vertical my vertical attacks to uh, try to get an opening. You can mix in a quick little one, two, three to mix it up just a little bit, especially if you've been doing the dash in and outs. For the most part, if you want to do this, you can go one, two, dash, one, two, two or three times. And then once you do the one, two, three, almost guarantee that they will not throw out the counter. Uh, it's all about conditioning your opponent to think about what you're going to throw out next. Um, and you can keep this in your head as well as part of your mental stacks. And I can go into mental stacks in a more advanced combat video. Um, but this is something that I've picked up literally over the past week uh, that I've been trying to perfect along with my dashes and how to, how to stack um, certain advantages in people's heads. Say you're right here, dash one, two, dash one, two. And then you can kind of back off to see what they're doing. Um, if they're charging of a focus in the middle of this dash, you can throw out a counter just for safety. If they're doing, if they're charging up a focus during your first one, two, and they're not getting hit stunned, then in the middle of this dash here, uh, after you throw out your one, instead of following up into the two, you can throw out a counter here. Um, it's all about conditioning your opponents and playing, playing in the way that you want them to. It's very important from here. Just trying to loot up, get a ranged weapon, you know, your typical Naraka stuff, golden musket. It never hurt. Now we're fully ready to go. Purple armor would be nice, but don't have it right this second. I hear a grapple, and the fight's about to be on. I'm under attack. Oh, I need more time. All right, so where do I begin to start breaking down this fight? First things first, we get caught by the grapple. I'm under attack. Definitely could have done the follow up I showed earlier. Interesting to note that both of Zipping Ying's uh, F skills, I have it bound to E down here, but they provide gold focus, meaning that you can get out of certain combos. And this inspiration shield actually is, is pretty sweet because you can eat a normal attack and then hit them with a normal attack of your own. It's actually pretty nice. And that helps me get a few hits here. Now do get caught on the counter here. A lot of players would panic here, I know. Um, in fact, instead of trying to pick up my original nunchuck, what I should be doing is going into my inventory and just quickly equipping the next weapon that I have. Uh, but that's not exactly how it plays out, as you can see. He screws up the combo, so we can quickly dash back. He does not go for a counter right there. This is one thing that I could work on, not telegraphing the double nunchuck charge. Now, he should have been looking out for that. I think he gets a little overzealous because he sees how low my health is, uh, which is always a common mistake uh, that players like to make. But he gets chunked up for all of his armor by doing that. All right, you're gonna see a classic case of the armor regen uh, from my two na that I went with, by the way. This little thing here, that's still, I believe, from the two na from earlier. So if you ever get that soul jade, uh, that's one thing that you wanna pay attention to. You can see it's still slowly but surely recovering there. But what he should have done here is bided his time, got the full armor recharge, because notice if I pause there, somewhere around there, I still have my revive. So this guy would have been much better off if he would have just hung out, let his armor recharge, play it a little bit safer. He also didn't even use his ult, which he might not have even had it. He, he should have won this fight 100% of the time, uh, but, you know, he gets a little bit overconfident, makes mistakes, 
and you capitalize on those mistakes every time. You know, do my skill to go ahead and get just a little bit of a top off there. This next fight's a little bit interesting. Watch closely. Actually, it's the next fight I'm thinking of. Guys, this is nothing different than what I showed in the earlier fight. It's the same kind of thing that you want to uh, pay attention to. You get your early advantage by hitting them with a musket or a ranged weapon. You kind of throw out the normal attacks to clank off the grapple attack. And now that he's now that he has his, um, his F1 skill up, you don't want to throw out any uh, focus attacks until you see that it's that the time's up. So what I like to do is just string together some long-lasting combos. You're going to see me go for a combo that's not true, uh, but if you can string it together, it does put you in a nice little advantage. That one right there. And I screw up the follow-up on this one. You were in the wrong place at the wrong time. And that last little move is what I told you before. It's the one dash to kind of scout what's going on there. The one is to create pressure and the dash is to see what they're doing. If they're not charging a focus attack, you can go for the quick one too. If they are charging a focus, then you go for the counter, which is what I just did there. I hear some movement, so we're looking for it. This is, this is the fight that's a little bit spooky. Okay, so you might have noticed that in the middle of that fight, um, my guy goes for a counter, and he probably should have gotten it, honestly. But we're going to rewind it and play it frame by frame so that we can take a good little look at it. Call it uh, beating BS with BS because Tarka Infinite is a thing. So obviously, I try to go for my one, but he's already charging the focus. I should have just uh, went for the counter anyway. Now this guy is pretty slick with it. You can see he goes for katana combos. I need more time. He tries to at least. I already have my jump, second jump, charge attack jump. coming out. Dodge that. But check this out. So I know what he, I know he's gonna try to go for quick little punch into the combo. I know that that's coming. What I don't know is that that little wind up actually has an iframe. And I tested this in a few games after this just to throw it out and kind of see what would happen. And I'm pretty sure that there's an iframe here. Either that or there's a ping problem, which would be really drastic because I'm on 55, which isn't even, it's not anywhere near having ping problems really. Um, so I'm pretty much 100% certain that that right there, the little after image before he throws out his uh, little fist is what blocks any incoming attack. From there, it's just the racket of Tarka Infinite. He drops it for some reason. I'm not really sure why he drops it. I think he just flubbed it up. I, my extra life would have helped me out there. Um, thankfully, I didn't have to use it. All right, he sees me double. He sees me doubling right here. The only thing that I can think of as to why this didn't work is because. If we rewind it fully here, and we take it frame by frame, he absolutely knows what's coming. Throws out the counter. Here comes my attack. The red is up. Watch when he gets hit. Right here. The only thing that I can... Actually, not even there. Right there. The only thing that I can think of is that the red flash is gone. And I caught it like the frame after the counter was active. That is the only thing that I can think of as to why I didn't get countered and I didn't, I didn't lose the fight. So 
I don't know if I got lucky. I don't know if he got gimped by some sort of ping issue. Either way, I mean, you're using Tarka Infinite, so I don't feel sorry for you, but that's pretty much the end of the fight. Let me know what you think down in the comments as to what exactly happened there. Skipping ahead to this Morris Blessing here. Just trying to see what I can get. Dual ring for some extra attack. Now this is very important. I noticed on my mini map that there's a Ballista right next to this Morris Blessing. And you can use this pretty effectively to bait out any nearby opponents. There are some people that'll just go for the Morris Blessing without checking their surroundings. And you can take big advantage of that. So just watch what we're able to get away with here in the next few minutes. All right, guys, so I've been up here for a little bit. I've been up here for like two minutes. Just looking for anybody that I can find. And wouldn't you know it, the there is someone coming begins. right there. Now check this out. You can bait them to the Moore's Blessing. Give them a nice little headshot. Nothing they can really do about it. They weren't paying attention. He goes behind cover, but there's a little opening right there. The 600 damage. You gone my way. The 600 damage Sorry. and the burn takes that out. And guys, you may have noticed that this is the Matari from earlier, so rest in peace. Skipping ahead, guys, I know that there's another Morse Blessing happening near the Plume, Plume Castle over here. I know that there's going to be someone coming to it. There usually is. Players just can't resist. So we're going to set up a nice little trap for them here in this next one. And now that's going to be our bait. And now we wait. The shadow will soon spread. Looks like they're taking the bait. I'm gonna come right up here. I'm gonna wait a second for them to actually get in the inventory. Quick little combo to start. Nice little advantage that we uh, got ourselves started with. Come to me and be healed. I swore an oath to do no harm, and that starts now. So this is a good example of catching someone by surprise and then their brain not working for the rest of the fight. So you can see how many counters they throw out that are just mistimed. There's one. There's two. Essentially what you can do is I charge up a horizontal nunchuck attack here. Just because if he throws out a blue focus, then it's going to clank off of my katana there. Or it's going to clank off of my nunchuck, sorry. And it's going to allow me another uh, free hit onto him if I want to, or a free dash into a combo. So it's always nice to have whenever you're using the nunchuck. Nice little neutral advantage there. And from there, it's just one, two, three, because he didn't time it right. Fairly certain that this guy is a bot. Just because he has blue armor and the way he's moving. If you're not a bot and you're in my comment section, I'm sorry. I'm just going off of observation here. And the fact that you're just walking away from me. Now this one I'm pretty sure is a real person. They could have played it a lot better. Basically I go in for the golden armor. And here the fight. Same old, same old. He goes for the counter. Not really sure what he was doing there. I look forward to sharing this victory. Doing the same old 1-2 dash that I like to do. So if we go right here. 1-2 dash. He wasn't charging a focus attack, so I let the second hit ring out. I see the red of the counter. And I'm also charging a, a blue horizontal focus. And I'm looking for this combo, which will give me some free damage. So you hit with the left, uppercut, go into a horizontal aerial. And then if you're quick enough, you can hit with a 1-2 vertical combo. But I was not quick enough, and he rolled away. But he also wasn't paying attention right there. A little bit slow to react there. I charge up my Dragon's Flurry. I look forward to sharing this victory. And that's it. But guys, that is the power of the 1-2 dash combo. Let me know what you think about it down in the comment. That's going to do it for the end of the video here. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoy these sorts of VOD reviews, uh, please be sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe for more Naraka Blade Point content. 
Thank you so very much to everyone who shares and comments on this video. It really does help a lot. And thank you to all our channel members uh, who decided to click that join button down by the subscription right down there. So thank you guys so much yet again. I've been OSK. Y'all have a great day and I'll see you in the next video. I will rise a thousand times. Stronger. I know life is getting harder Not like I would choose another My tears are healing back